Nine, so take a picture. Uh, welcome, everybody. TGD Today, Pro Golf Talk Live, coverage of the majors. We're going to wrap it all up into one show for you. I'm George Honeycutt with Hugh Roy the Third, of course, our playing professional, past PGA Tour player, and joining us today, a very special guest. A yeah. very special, special, special needs guest. The cognitor. Is that is that a good description? Well, I knew that. I knew that. The cognitor. I knew they were here when I saw the That's short bus. So when you saw the short bus going out at seventeen. I, I knew that. <laughs> Our favorite redneck golfer, Mr. Dennis Coggin, is in the house. Absolutely. Guys, i got to chime in here if I can. George has been telling us on the air for a long time about the Coggin shot, you know. And well, that I, was a Coggin. And, and I never really understood what the Coggin was, but I've never seen anybody get more lucky bounces yeah. in my life than this guy. I'm telling you. He can balloon one straight up in the air with 3,000 RPMs of backspin on it. He'll bounce forward 25 yards. Oh, I, yeah. Trust me. I've seen him hit a dead shake watch he hit a tree go in the green. Yeah. I mean, he hit it in the bunker and it jumps out and lands up on the collar. Oh, yeah. I mean, just I've never seen anything like it. Oh, yeah. It's called L-U-C-K. Uh, yeah, well... He, hey, he smells something. He smells something. He right. Smelled right. right. <laughs> yeah, I was worried about that. For uh, <laughs> I was worried. Worry <laughs> oh, God. Well, speaking of the Coggin, we, we had the opportunity just the other day to run out to Thistle and play a round of golf. How good are those greens? I'll tell you, dude. They are absolutely I, I mean, you great. I mean, you can't. I mean, they, they, and, if you don't make a putt out there, you can't putt. And they just better have five and was perfect. We played the one side that they had on Tuesday night. We played the little shootout thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, there with Charles. And I'm telling you, you put on, it's like putting on this table. Today. That's yeah, right. that's right. I mean, it is an absolute joy to play yeah. so much. Like Chad that. and Jamie and the whole staff out there, they welcomed us. Uh, with open we arms. Time. We had a great time. Took uh, Mr. Gilder with me. But I beat my man. Huh? I, I got my man. That wasn't your man. No, I got my man. That wasn't your man. <laughs> <laughs> you throwing me on your son? Is that what you're doing now? I got my man. <laughs> that's not the way we discussed it before. Well, that's not it. Uh, he says, He says now, son, of course, that being Ryan. Ryan. He said, Ryan, now, you just take care of Jeff. I got my man. I'm sitting there going, oh, yeah. <laughs> That ain't happening. I didn't make a charge at the end. You I did. Would, you, you made a charge. You had an eagle. Folks, I will tell you this. <coughs> there ought to be a reality show when they play golf, yeah. when they are together, because it is that. It is funny. funny. <laughs> the arguments, the, arguments, it the screaming, the comments. <laughs> now, you would have to bleep a lot of it, but good Lord, is it hysterical. <laughs> oh. You couldn't. It, it is. It, it is. makes the housewives of Orange County look like oh, uh, yeah. kids show. Oh, yeah. It looks like cartoons. Yeah, it is. And it is entertaining four and a half hours. There's no doubt about it. He came playing four and a half hours. Uh, we did that day. We did. Yeah. That's just because nobody else nobody was on the golf course. <laughs> we went the first tee time. I mean, you know, it's by the time he gets his walker out and gets to his ball and whatnot, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was it. Get him a walker. We got to do that right. We got to get him a walker. All right, so we went out and played this old phenomenal. Over the weekend, I was able to go out to Arrowhead, where the Rich Jacobs yep. is this week, coming up on the 22nd. It looks decent. Um, it was in fantastic shape. I'm sitting here going, and what are you charging locals? I think it was $39. Yeah. And I'm the best manicured, conditioned, greens golf course <laughs> For that price that I have ever seen. And the beauty of it is you pay a green fee and go play golf out there. You get all 27 holes in one day. Yeah. It's not like you're just getting 18 holes. You can play all 27. I mean, trimmed up. Bunkers were perfect. Greens were perfect. And I, I just, you, you can't believe how well conditioned that golf course is and why they just aren't slammed with people. And I, I just think as word gets out, more and more and more because Arrowhead's always in good shape. Well, look, I've it, never been there when it wasn't in good I, shape. I tell you what, George, and just to be honest, there are, I would say, Jeff, probably 10 plus golf courses in this area that right now are really, really struggling with their greens. Yes, absolutely. No doubt. That is going to increase that for the ones that have taken the time, spent the money, and gotten their golf courses in good shape. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's going to go away. Because there's a, I know there's several golf courses that are absolutely unplayable right now. So sure. 
you know, you look at some of the good ones, you know, your crow creeks, your thistles, places like that, arrowhead. I've never seen arrowheads. Tidewaters. I mean, no, the years I've been here, I've never seen never, those guys have no. a problem. No matter what time of the year it is. And, of course, it's always immaculate. Well, they put the money into it. Yeah. That's the difference. You spend the money. The straw was even clean. Trust me, I saw enough of it. But, I mean, that's the thing. That's what's going to help these people get sure. there. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's so many that people just aren't going to come to. Yeah. All right. Well, 116th plan of the U.S. Open Championship happening as we speak at Oakmont Country Club, just outside of Pittsburgh, about 15 miles just north. And um, it is going to be, I think, Oakmont himself is going to be the the character of the week. No doubt about it. And uh, the, that's more, going to be the story. More so uh, Saturday and Sunday. The rain, you know, the softness of it. You know, they did get an inch and a half yesterday afternoon. And it shows in the scores. It they're shows calling the scores. for three quarters to two and a half inches tonight. Uh, there is another storm front that's coming in on Thursday afternoon. Tomorrow, uh, slight chance of rain, but the winds are going to pick up 10 to 15. And then on Saturday and Sunday, 90 degrees, no wind, just golf. So, I think... I think and Oakmont, of course, you know, you, you got to consider it, it founded 1903. It's hosting its ninth U.S. Open. It's hosted 16 USGA championships. It is known as probably the hardest golf course to hold major championships. Um, they've removed 15,000 trees over the last 20 years. Uh, it has been an exercise and long, you know, time objective to remove trees. And it just so happened at the last 2007, when the Open was held there last, and Hell Cabrera ended up winning, winning, correct, at five over par, which is the highest winning score of the U.S. Open in the modern era. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, I think that's what the U.S. Open needs to get back to with the way they've allowed equipment to evolve and what we're able to play with nowadays. It, you've got to create circumstances and conditions that create scores of that nature. I think it brings the common spectator back into the sport. If you've got somebody that's at 23 under par, there are seven shots in the lead, it, it just kind of takes away from the ambiance of watch. It's, it's like watching a race, a horse race or a car race. If, if you got somebody that's lapped everybody and they're, you know, there's no way they can get caught. Guess what? The channel gets flipped. Well, exactly. And that's where you just took it where I was going because it's, if the average person is sitting in front of the television watching the U.S. Open and there's a the guy that's, he's hit what looked like a pretty good tee shot and it kind of bounces and just goes in the edge of the rough. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you see this guy, he just hacks his thing out and it goes about 15 yards. They're going, hey, look at this. Yeah. Like, that's what happens to me all the time. And that's going to keep them involved. And the USGA is good at doing that. Mm -hmm. If they do it the right way, they got away from it. Last year was an absolute disaster. Absolute yeah, that disaster. Was, that was, pretty, pretty that was a disaster. That hurt golf in general. This year, if with, I wish well, see, we, hold on. I'm going to argue with you that it didn't hurt golf in general. I'm going to argue that point. When you watch tour pros, tour pros sit there and look at balls, and they're going boom, 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 because like the ball's bouncing down there like a plinko yeah, boy. Yeah, but you're talking it as a player. Yeah, but no, I'm talking it's yeah. a person seeing that on television. They don't want to see that. They just want to watch them struggle. That golf course. Yeah, but the amateur play. golfer is probably playing those same greens every weekend. Well, you, <laughs> you, you putting on pole at it. Well, no. you know, I'm just talking about that condition yeah, right. of, of green. And not rolling at a 13 or a 14 there. No, you saw what? No, no. Yeah, I, I agree. They were at parking lot speed. So, so you're smoking you're, you're smoking crack again and need to get off. I, I, I'm, I'm just saying if, 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 if they watch a golf tournament and watch <laughs> these guys struggle because the fairways are narrow, the rough is deep, it's all brushed back at them, and the greens are fast, and they, they're hitting shots and the balls are rolling off the greens, the average person can relate to that a lot better than watching somebody go out and make a yeah, bunch of they can. shoot 20 they can. Par. They can. That's what's going to bring them back in. And I hate that it rained simply because I wanted to see them start out and struggle from the get-go. Mm -hmm. 
Now, this is giving them a little easier chance to control their ball and get it to where they want it around the greens, where if it was like it was in the practice rounds. I mean, Nabilo just dropped one on, I saw it this morning, dropped one on two green yesterday and watched it roll 40 yards down the fairway. Well, you're talking 10 meter 14, too. And that's slow. Yeah. And they've had it slow them down. Yeah, and that's slow. That's, that's, down. that's, that's, that's slowing slow. down. So that was, that's been the big thing. There's been a lot of blogging, a lot of texts sent out by members and things of that sort. I mean, we have quotes from some of their members saying, we want those guys to shoot 100. They are sadistic people we, out there. We, we want these people to come in here and feel the pain that is Oakmont. You know, this is not a pushover golf course. They want somebody to go play Oakmont, not lose a ball, and shoot 115. Yeah. I mean, that's how sadistic they are. And that's fine. Absolutely. They love the game. That's their prerogative. It's their that's golf right. course. That's you right. don't like it, don't come back. Goodbye. That's right. And, they, need you. and they do 200 rounds a day. And the funniest part is they keep trying to relate it to Augusta. Yeah. Okay. No, they are, they, hang on. Yeah. They say they're saying they are the same speed as Augusta. Yeah. But Augusta doesn't have near the slopes they've got at Oakmont. Oh, let me ask you this: How many fifty-year-olds did you see qualify for this Open? Fifty one. plus one. One. Yeah. one. Okay. One. Now, I was going to try because I played there in '94. Yeah. Just wanted to go one. back. That's I where Heather's one. from. But I'm gonna tell you. I wouldn't want to be 35 and qualify for it. I played there for four days, yeah. and I'm telling you, when I got done, Daddy said, call me and let me know how excited you are when you're done. I called him. I said, I'm excited. He goes, really? Why? I said, because I'm done. <laughs> right. I don't have to do this anymore. I've never been so miserable to be. I had played 37 holes, made the cut, teed off, birdied the first hole, and I was in the top 10 at the U.S. Open. Now, I finished 40-something. Yeah. But you know what? I don't care. I just was glad to get out of there. I was so tired and exhausted. This golf course beats you to death from every aspect. Of you can have the best sports psychologist, physical trainer, golf, swing coach, whatever you want. And I'm telling you, it will beat you like a redheaded stepchild. Well, you, well, you know, what, a 16 to 280 yard par three? Is that correct? No, that's number eight. Eight, number eight. 288. And then you got a par four that's playing shorter than the par three. Yeah. Well, you got you got three par fours that they can they can make drivable. Okay, you've seventeen, seventeen, correct. yeah, and thirteen. They well, there's six set of tees. They can drive one. They can drive one. That's Literally, right. the guys that can carry at three twenty can drive yeah. one. They can. All they got to do is reach the crest on the right hand side. They fly it to the top. It'll go right to the and, top. And it'll go down. Um, the thing is, is the USGA is going to go out there and, like today, if they likewise get soft conditions tomorrow, then we're going to start seeing the length. That is Oakmont coming into play. Sure. They're going to go ahead and move the tees back because the fairways are softer. They're able to control their landing area a little bit better, their landing reaction a little bit better. And that probably shot. 15 to 20 yards short of greens. Forget about just the rain they get. They will be watering that to make you land it even shorter to try to bounce it in. How many cuts are rough? Two, two, two cuts, two, eight inch. And no, eight no, inch. No, 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 not eight. Four, four, four. four. Yeah. Your, your primary is four. Your primary is four. four. Yeah. Um, they, they're saying between. They had actually cut a majority of it down to three because they knew the moisture was coming in, and they knew that it could get uglier. Yeah. So they did kind of thin it up a little bit. Uh, that happened Monday and Tuesday. Uh, there was a lot of mowing going on Tuesday and Wednesday with the rough areas after they saw the forecast. So they were trying to help themselves manage it so over the weekend it doesn't get to five and six. Yeah. But how many times do you see in a golf course in a golf tournament where they're out there raking the rough? They're raking it to the team. Yep. So if your ball goes in there, it's like going to grab it and hunt in the hole. It's just, you better hope somebody saw it coming back. Well, interestingly, too, there was comments by Jordan Spieth earlier in the week that he, during his practice round, the biggest thing that he caught by surprise was the additional sands that they had added to the bunkers. Well, lo and behold, that afternoon, the, the interviews coming out of the Golf Channel were with the green superintendent, and also with the USGA Executive Grounds Director. And they were quick to note that Mr. Spieth was incorrect in his summary 
that there had been sand added to the bunkers. There had been no sand added to the bunkers in over two years. What they had done is brought in special rakes and implemented specific raking procedures for the bunkers. And then that takes the grains of sand that were laying basically flat and it basically pops them up and they lay across one another in a crisscross pattern. Now, have they gone back to the grooves in the bunkers? Yes. Where you rake it with the big wide grooves? Yes. That's over. Yeah. You hit it in a bunker. It's like Mickelson said in his interview last night. I was just flipping through the channels. He said, you hit it in a fairway bunker just because if you had a good lie with several of them, you can get it out of them. But most of the time with the lie you're going to get, you're just going to wedge it out. But yeah, you're going outside because it's primarily. They've got grooves in there that are that wide. Mm -hmm. yeah. So your ball is just good. Unless you get lucky and it happens to sit on top of one, it's going in that groove and you cannot hit it solid. It's well, amazing. speaking of bunkers, of course, you've got between hole number three and four, the par four and the par five, you've got the famous church pews. Yep. And interestingly, I kind of did some research on this. Uh, these pews have been around since basically day one. Sure. Uh, there was originally six of them. There are now 12. Uh, the average width of these things is about 85 feet wide. The, in, the pew bunker is considered to be one bunker, and it currently holds oh, uh, roughly about 550 tons of sand, um, around 20,000 square feet in diameter. It's a half acre. They made it another 30 yards longer. I know that. Yeah, for, for this championship. For this championship. And, the and they put pews, it on both ends, too, yeah. interestingly. And the church pews themselves are about eight feet in between. Mm-hmm. They're eight feet wide. And they're considered to be a hazard, folks. And then if you get into the wispy grass that is the pews themselves, that is considered just like fairway. So, you know, it's, it's you just got to take your stance and play out of it. You don't get any relief. You don't, you know, you have to identify your ball just like you do anywhere else. And then you can have an unplayable lie. There could be an unplayable lie situation. So you're going to play it just like you would as if you're in the fairway or the first cut or the second cut. And then if you're in the bunker, like Hugh said, and you have played there hundreds of times, more than likely you're going to be going out sideways versus advancing it toward the, the green surface. So if you so. can advance it, you're only going to advance it 20, 25 yards. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's just one of those. It is a hazard. You take your medicine, and you it's, you can hit a drop, or you can hit it out of there. And, and so it, it's just the way that they do it. And, you know, by the article we talked about last week, you know, they, these people, they don't want you to have a good time. They want you to be miserable. They want you to be miserable, and the, if you like their golf course, great. Come back and be miserable with the rest of us, but you're going to get your butt kicked, and I promise you, folks, you will. Mike Davis this morning did a quick video that they uh, posted on the USGA website. Uh, the effects of the rain last night, uh, he said that the rain got about an inch, inch and a half that they measured there on the golf course. The greens today were a foot and a half slower today than they were yesterday. He said that those would pick back up in speed as the greens, of course, released their moisture. And he said he's expecting upwards of an inch to two inches tonight. So, again, tomorrow they will probably be the same speed. But then come Saturday and Sunday, they will be monitoring the speeds to make sure that they're representative of Oakmont. And here's the thing, folks. We were talking about this morning, and this is where if you've ever had the question of what's meant by people talking about how a morning tea time 90% of the time is better than an afternoon tea time, watch the difference in the scoring this morning compared to this afternoon and the same thing for tomorrow because with the softer conditions, with the slower greens in the morning, your scores are going to be better. Afternoon, you're going to get some wind, breeze coming through, maybe another thunderstorm, whatever, but it's going to get breezier. They're going Tomorrow. to dry out. Yeah. And when that happens, I mean, this golf course, I mean, greens slope a certain way. You can think you're playing a smart shot to the middle of the green, and you're better off missing it left in the rough and trying to pitch out of it than trying to land it in the middle of the green because it's going to run all the way off the Correct. Middle of the green. So. There, there, this is just something that is old school golf. Some people say, oh, it's ridiculous. You know, it's the U.S. Open. That's right. Hey, get used to it. That's right. You can whine and say, oh, it's ridiculous. But everybody's got to play the same golf course. The person who gets a little bit of luck, 
who has the most patience and who can think their way around this place is the one that's going to win and be the one standing there holding that trophy on Sunday. Well, right now, Andrew Landry is through 11 holes. He is three under par for the championship. Kevin Strillman's at two under through nine. Matthew Fitzpatrick. Do you see that name right there? That's the kid from England. Oh, he's cheating over here. Yeah. yeah. That's the kid. Didn't he win a couple weeks ago? That was done this morning. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, he, did. Yeah, he, did. Yeah. he is at two under par through six. Also is Danny Lee. Lee Westwood, two under through six. A surprise name, but we talked about him a couple They're weeks ago. talking about this resurgence with him. It's kind of cool to see. Okay. Well, he won't say that. Ryder Cup. Yeah. yeah. So, Kevin Chapels at one under through seven. Harris English at one under through five. Shane Lowry, one under through four. Jordan Spieth, one under through four. Patrick Wilkes Cryer is at one under through three. Then you have Waddle, Tanahara, Berger, Kucher, Reed, Cabrera Bello, Kirk, uh, Zach Johnson, who Zach actually went to two under par at one point yeah. and now back to even par. Like Ricky Fowler had gotten to one under. He was one shot behind the leaders, and then Ricky had a double bogey on five, I believe it was. Which is not hard to do. No, no, it's not hard on any of these holes. If you don't pay attention, shot, shot, shot. Yes. I mean, if you you do a haphazard, just a lag putt, I mean, you can find yourself, much like Pinehurst was. um, You know, I was watching the Payne Stewart, Phil Mickelson, final round of Pinehurst, you know, just a couple of months before Payne Stewart was so taken from us, uh, you know, unplanned and really way short of his lifespan. One of the sunniest people in the world. I'll never forget him putting banana peels on my shoes my rookie year. (laughs) I've never heard people laugh so hard. I thought he peed in his pants. I mean, it was just, you know, he was the biggest practical joker on tour. Well, he was loved by everyone. It it was good this morning, bright and early. I was watching that, and um, it it just it it reminded me of the, you know, you watch them make their approach shots like on seven at Pinehurst, and and both he and Phil hit what looked like to be great shots, and then all of a sudden the ball's coming back at them, and uh, they were literally ten yards off the green, and then the ball ended up at ten yards at their feet again, and. You know, Phil gets up and down from there for a great par, uh, you know. And then, Pat, um, you know, uh, Payne ends up making bogey. That brings him to – I mean, that's what the Open's about. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're all right there. Tiger made a surge. Um, David Duvall was making a push. Uh, so, it was just really compact. VJ Singh was all over him. He was climbing all over him. And – it was just fun to watch that when you've got that herd of golfers that are going after that prize. And one of them is not just absolutely blowing everybody away with seven birdies in a row. It's true. And we're not going to see that at Oak Mono. You're going to see a guy make two birdies in a row, but then for whatever reason, one of the lug nuts is going to come off. Yep. It's inevitable. Well, I mean, like I said, sooner or later, I don't care how mentally tough you are. You're going to have one of those brain blips to where you just kind of go to sleep because you're just so damn tired. You, you just look up and you go, is this over yet? You know, I mean, it, it's just the way it goes. And Just emotionally so challenging that you're you're just worn out. You have no earthly idea. I mean, if no, I don't. And, and, well, I don't. I don't and I, no, I, no, I will say this. Yes, you do. You're in the military. But <laughs> imagine being a combat soldier in Vietnam and you're going through – that kind of attack every single yep. day, that's what it's like playing this golf course. It's that, that threatening life and death life. Mm-hmm. It's crazy because you mm-hmm. just can't rest. Mm-hmm. If you put your guard down, you're done. You're going to get cooked. You're toast. And it's the same scenario, just with kind of different results. Thank goodness. But, you know, <laughs> U.S. Open used to be for the, short, for the short hitter, okay, keep it in play, just keep it out of rough. Okay. Like you can fear it. Yeah, yeah, David Tom. But in this one, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Well, everybody has said during the week yeah. and all the interviews, by the way, folks, they are in um, a suspended play right now due to inclement weather. Inclement, inclement weather. Inclement weather. Climate. <laughs> Clamping. All right. Um, Everybody in the interviews all this week has said, you got to drive the ball, you got to drive the ball, you got to hit the fairways, you got to drive the ball, you got to drive the ball. I didn't hear anybody except for one make a comment about putting. 
Now that I haven't heard either. Not one professional made a comment about putting, except for Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth says, yeah, you got to hit fairways. Yeah, you got to be proper and precise with your iron selections on your approach shots. But the most important club in my bag this week is just to make sure that I don't get myself in trouble on these greens, meaning three putts. Yeah. You take your Dustin Johnsons. He's going to bust it out there 320. He's going to hit, hopefully, if he's in a groove like he was last year in the, in the fourth round at Chambers Bay, he's dissecting every fairway. He's hitting 247-yard five irons into approach shots, and then he's three-jacking from 12 feet. Yeah. Which I, and okay. I'm going to tell you right now, George, you cannot play this golf course without three-putt. No, it's inevitable. At some point in it's the tournament, inevitable. you're going to three-putt. You may four-putt. But what you don't want is that five-putt. You yeah. don't want to hurt else. No. But you can do it. And you can hit good putts and still do it. Right. All right. Uh, we've talked about the names, some of the names on the courses, as Hugh expertly noted. The morning round. Uh, most of them have gotten through, but it, it seems like the weather hit early. Uh, they really weren't calling for it till later today, but now it seems like to be coming through. And once it starts, supposedly it was going to last for several hours. So we'll see yeah, how much of a delay we have. But what we're going to do now is make our picks. Sure. Okay. I've got Jeans. Gene, Gene uh, unable to join us today due to some health issues, but uh, we wish you the best, Gene. And come back soon, bud. You owe us some donuts. So... Uh, <laughs> Gene picked Dustin Johnson to win, Justin Rose, Brooks Kepka, and his long shot is Kevin Strillman. Uh, Gene simply went to the scoreboard early this morning and made his pick. So I can say that because he's not here to defend himself. Yes, I know. Okay. All right. HR, who you got? I have got Justin Rose. Rose. Sergio Garcia. Garcia. You, you, you're, you're looking over at my paper. That's Jordan not Spieth. fair. Jordan Spieth. Spieth. Long shot. Who stays Jeff, can we get like a petition here or something? I, did I not have those? Did that, that's unbelievable. Like it just ran right out of his hand. Right, right. Yeah. The only thing I've seen him pull out of his body is, but never mind, I can't go. You can't say it. Who you got, D? I'm going to keep up with your. I got Mickelson. Mickelson. Ro- Rose. Dustin Johnson. Rose. Sergio. Rose. Johnson. Sergio. Okay. Garcia. All right, I'll announce mine. Matsuyama, Hideki. Hideki. Sergio Garcia, Louis Ustazen, and Matthew Fitzpatrick. Catch your mama? Why in the world would you want to pick him? Be glad you didn't pick, huh? pick Alfie Barnard. Holy Jiminy Cricket. That's, <laughs> right. That's his favorite. <laughs> and Heather, I'm so sorry, but Tung Jai Jai D is not <laughs> playing this week. <laughs> he had to pull out. But I had to say his name. Y'all expect me every week to say his name. So, Tung Jai Jai D is not participating in the 116th U.S. Hey, Dickie, catch your mama. I can't believe that. Hey, catch your mama. He likes that guy. And for some reason or another, I don't know. He likes him, too. Don't let him fool He's you. on him. Last week, he was all over. Uh, him. The guy's got, got some game. I had no question about it. If he, uh, ball striking wise right now, he's, he's at a peak. And um, if he can get some uh, putts to go down. He's got a great short game. I just, I kind of, I, and you know what? For him to win a U.S. championship, huge. Mm-hmm. Just oh, yeah. huge. I agree. So, uh, Garcia, I think we both went with the emotional pick there. Well, I, you know, honestly, I, as emotional as it is, the, the way I'm looking at this, George, is, you know, he's actually hitting the ball really good. Sure he is. Okay. But he is every year. No, I mean better than in the past. Watching his golf swing, he's made a couple little adjustments to it. It's not quite as violent at the ball. And but as with these greens. Let's talk about are, the important thing, though, and you're going there. These greens. What about his putting? These greens are going to help his putting. Oh. Because all he's got to do is he can do his little claw or whatever he's doing. All he's got to do is just get it rolling on a line. 
if he can get a line and just get it rolling and, and just trust that he and his cat yeah, read it right, I think these greens are going to help him. And he just recently went to the club. That's where he really struggles is when he's got to try to stroke it and put some heat to it to get it to the hole. That's where he struggles. Good point. So, see, I went to bat for your man crush. My man crush. Oh, you pick him every week. That was last year's man crush. That was last year's. Year. Thank, Thank you very much, Jeff. It still is. <laughs> Trust me, it still is. But that's that's why I think he's a – and plus, you, like you said, experience, you know, the whole – Have I mentioned Perina Jewett? <laughs> I saw – I see. Louis Oostase. I like him. It was it was a toss up between him and Charles. He is, a, and you know why? But I Charles him? got that wrist issue again. Yeah, but you know why I picked him? It's very close to the Cabrera type scenario. Mm-hmm. Both of them hit it nine miles of like it's effortless as it can be, and if he can drive it well, and you know, I'll, 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 that's why. Louis Louis short game is really good, really good. Sometimes surgeon has him. Yeah. There's no doubt. Um, is Rose's back going to be a hindrance this week? He's not. Everything I've heard, he's, he's 100%. Now, I notice in our picks here, Gene's included, Gene, if you're listening in, uh, we don't have Jason Day. We don't see a Rory McElroy on these picks. Mr. Coggin goes all the way out and reaches out for – 46-year-old, happy birthday, Phil Mickelson. Well, he could do it. Possibility. That's flown across the country twice. Just to, just, and, and I admire him for doing it, but, I mean, that age, that stuff takes its toll. Um, I, you this, know, this this I, completes Phil's I don't slam. think I don't think Rory's got the patience and the smarts to play this golf course yet. Not ever, but yet. Because this golf course right here, you can't stand there and try to bomb it like he likes well, it's to It's not going to come back yeah. for eight years, so. But I'm just saying, this yeah. type of a golf course, you've got to learn, well, you know what, man, I can hit driver, but maybe I need to hit that long iron, you know, that, that driving iron down there and hit an eight iron in there instead of trying to. I, I just, I don't know. I, so do you go with a speed? You go with the speed you go with because of his Johnson? putting? You go with the Zach Johnson. I agree. Yeah. I almost went. Zach I almost Johnson. went Zach Johnson. I almost went. The only Zach thing Johnson. that scares me is there's a par three. He's going to be hitting a driver in a three quarter lob wedge too. Yeah, exactly. But other than that, I think the kid's got a chance. I almost went Zach. Um, but see, there, there again, you get to you guys that hit fairways. You know, well, it's not even that. But they, they're smart. Yeah. He's so a, why do you and Gene Weldon, the professor himself? Go with a Dustin Johnson? I don't know. I just, uh, just, just uh, because of last year? No, because well, last night last. Somebody, he is a man amongst boys, and it went there. A man amongst boys. That's he's, what they called him on the golf channel. He is. That is what they said on the sure, golf channel. Sure, 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 sure. Did you hear that? That's what they said. That's what they said. I heard that and I fell off the couch. I heard it, and I did fall off the couch. Yeah. I mean, and that's where it's coming from. I mean, Dustin's got the game, yeah, but I mean, I did really you can say what you want. You Golf Channel's it. impression of him right now is that he's the hottest player on tour. Although he hasn't won this year, he has eight PGA Tour wins, and that's over the last nine years. And but again, let's go, Jeff, give me two seconds here. You got it. Let's go back to last year at Chambers Bay. Sure. Okay. Let's do First it. Greens. Other than the Muni and Charleston on this planet, okay? The Morgan Darius is close. Yeah, that's right? pretty close. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they were horrible. This guy hits a bomb off of eighteen. He's one shot down. He's got two forty-seven to pin. He hits it's the high and hits it. Hits it what? Twelve, 12 feet. feet. Hits it feet. 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 twelve feet. Now, hang on. It's coming downhill. It's the Plinko board on the Price is Right. It's bouncing forty different directions. Why do you try to make that putt? Why try to make it? If it goes in, fantastic. If it doesn't, you tap it in, and then you take your five hours the next day and take a chance on outrunning this guy. Mm-hmm. What he did in that last hole, nerves, choking, whatever they want to call it, I've heard him try to give excuses. I've heard him try to say he choked. I've listened to this for you for this week. I've actually watched golf, okay? Mm-hmm. The dumbest move by any professional golfer I've ever seen in my life. I agree, and Jason Day was trying to help him. 
Yeah. 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 People oh, trying to give him the line, trying to tell him this is what it's going Jason to do. Jason put it out. He went ahead and said, hey, let me clean up. Well, he hit it from the same side of the damn hole. He hole. did. And I, he, that's what I'm he saying. He tried to nurse it, and it went that far by. So he's like, he's looking at him like, hey, hey, you know. Hey, did you see that? Do you want me to finish or what? I'm like, dude, get out of the clouds. Well. It's the U.S. Open for crying out loud. Get out of the think. I love his comment this week also where he says that, yeah, I, I should have made that four-footer coming back, and I, I truly believe that I would have won the playoff with Jordan. Like, he's talking like Jordan would have never had a chance. He would have just ran away with it. And th- that's a pretty bold statement from someone that just three jack from 12 feet. Yeah. So what did Dusty shoot last weekend? He shot 63 on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 63 on Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's your point? Yeah. He got momentum. He wasn't in and any marquee group. Yeah. He wasn't in any marquee group. He finished uh, an hour and a half before the damn leaders did. And as soon as anybody puts a newspaper or a, or a microphone in front of him, he goes dead dumb. I mean, it, it just... I don't know. Maybe there's too many burn cell, burned up brain cells. I, I'm not going to touch that one. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> momentum coming out of Memphis, going to a U.S. Open means nothing. Yeah. The raw talent. Solved. The raw talent that this he, kid he, has. He's is, got it. No question. No question. No question. No question. Who do we truly, 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 truly believe is going to win this thing? Is it Spieth? Is it Pettelson? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, well, I'm with, oh, he's I'm got with Sam yeah. Snead, Curse, he's got no uh, chance. Does Mickelson retire if he wins, if he wins this? No. Does no he way. call it quits? No. 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 He's, no. To no. Be the next he's three years away from the senior tour. What? He's 46 40. today. Yeah, he'd be 40. Yeah, he's 46 no, today. four years. Yeah, four years. Yeah, he's four years away. They taught him to add and do it again. Yeah. But it, the thing is... <laughs> I just think it's somebody more along the lines. <laughs> Kaida County School System. Yeah, I know. East Kaida. Um, I, I just think it's somebody along the lines of a, of a Rose or a Spieth or a Zach Johnson. You know, or it, a Ustazen. It, yeah, somebody that's you know, Ustazen, when he wins, is going to be because talent and luck. Because I don't know if he's actually got the brains that these guys do the way that you watch these guys work their way around a golf course. They've got a game plan, and they do it like a search. And it's precision to get the here and here. What about what about someone that was also heavily, heavily in the hunt down the? What about a Brandon Grace? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, and he's got one of the best caddies in the world, Zach Rosego. So yeah, I, I think he could very well be there. I think it's going to be the winner of this. Heather and I talked about it last night. I think he could very easily be someone that just comes from nowhere. Yeah. Oh, sure. They qualified and just happened to play well, and all of a sudden, at the end of it, they're like, crap, I just won. Like a Hideki Matsuyama? No. He's a not a nobody. No. Well, according to y'all, he is. You know. Or Tung Hai JD? Yeah. yeah. Tung Jai's not playing. So. <laughs> and, of course, Tiger pulled out. Are we sad? You know, I, 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 he wasn't ready to play in the U.S. Open. But, I mean, I tell you what, it was a pretty cool piece last night about him and Jason Day and how they text back and forth, whether it's advice or they're just jacking with yeah. each other. I, you know, it just shows you what I've been saying all along. Y'all thought I was crazy, but Tiger's a good dude. And, you know, we all made we mistakes. Never said he was. We've all made mistakes in our lives, but I tell you what, for him to do that and help that kid out is just, yeah. it, it, I think it's pretty cool. It is. And um, I love that Oakmont's hosting this open. Oh, I think it's just tremendous. Um, you know, next year will be um, a little bit of a letdown. Yeah. It will be. I mean, Oakmont is the epitome of the U.S. Open. It is. And, you know, I'd like to send our, our best out, George, uh, to Bob Ford. I mean, oh, absolutely. His last one, he's retiring after 37 years at Oakmont. Man was like a, a mentor to me, a very good friend. Director of golf at Oakmont and Oakmont. also at Seminole. At Seminole. I think he's going to kind of hang on to Seminole a little bit and, and do that. Why not? But, um, you know, when I was in Pittsburgh, he, you know, he allowed me to come up there and practice when I had nowhere else to go. And, you know, the members up there were very gracious. And we used to have a lot of fun having them put me in places to see yeah. what could happen. And, and just a, a first-class man, a first-class individual. And if you listen to any of his interviews this week, just 
it's old school, and it's a, it's a sad day for me because honestly, those days are gone, mm-hmm. and he is one of the last of a dying breed, and it's a shame. It's a you know, he very shame. much. Uh, you you almost take Mr. Ford and Mr. Weldon, and you put them in the same. Hey, yeah, exactly. Don't you agree? Yes, they treat people with respect. They you know they go out of their way. I mean, it just don't get the big head, Gene. But I mean, you know, you go into a pro shop there. Yeah. You don't see that. There's no, but like you say, there's no it's old problem. school. It's old school. It's a dying breed. And, you know, just my best to Bob and his and my gratitude for everything that he's helped me do throughout my life and career. And, and just for being a friend. All that he's done for golf. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Uh, I think it's, a, it's an example that some of these guys coming up nowadays need to sit back and look and, and learn from because it's missing. And it's missing terribly. Yeah. Dave, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. A lot it. of fun having you, bud. Uh, we couldn't get Ryan on the air. He's still, he's still recovering from seasick. Yeah. He's recovering. From, yeah. Hey, let's give Captain Danny a big shout out. Why are you about that? Anybody coming up here to go deep sea fishing, I suggest you look him up. Captain Danny Jewel, Fish Creamer Charters. I'm telling you. He, deep sea fishing.com. he put us on some. We Like I so said, we lost four, okay? If we if we caught those four, no telling what would happen. And, 40, 50 pound Kobe is just, oh my lord, dude. You talk about some oh, good eat. Oh, oh, we, oh. I'm supposedly getting some, but I have His it. deck hands, absolutely great. My Oscar and uh, Robbie, I mean, just. I would have thought he had brought some into the studio, too. Yeah. Well, you Oscar was cleaned everything right there on the spot for us. It took him about an hour. And they're out of Calabash, right? Yeah. When you clean him five, six, 50 pound fish, you just don't clean them in 10 minutes. That's work. Huh? That's work. <laughs> But, Best work, no doubt. But, so, uh, took you out, had a great day, all-day affair, private charter. Private charter. Yep. Yeah, eight hours. Like a little rough coming back. We got a little storm. Well, yeah, yeah. the storms were rolling. Yeah, it was rolling in, but it was all hunky-dory. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, great guy. Glad you had a good Sorry, time. just make sure you put a nipple on Never met a stranger guy, I'm telling you. I, and when I, when, the, first, the first time I said something to him, I said, this guy's never met a stranger. He started in and didn't stop. By the way, too, on behalf of our producers, Jeff Gilder and myself, I want to thank you and Ryan for the uh, money. Yeah, it was contribution. Uh, it was yeah. contribution. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we appreciate that. We'll send you a, a receipt. I appreciate the, the read on those putts. <laughs> yeah. That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like that little three. Especially on number nine. Yeah, number nine. That was <laughs> number nine. I thought you were a little high on that. But yeah. yeah. But it was good. Yeah, he called it expertly, no doubt about it. So thanks, Dee. Thanks for joining us. Safe travels back to Noonan, Georgia. And, uh, Ryan, that's for you also, by the way. HR, have a good week. I look forward to Monday when we do the golf wrap and bring everybody back up to speed on the summary with the U.S. Open. It's exciting. Web.com Tour is in Tennessee this week. They are playing the inaugural event of the Nashville Open, and that is now two Web.com Tour events held in Tennessee. They got, the, of course, the Sentinel News in, in Knoxville, and now uh, the event in Nashville. So congratulations to them. Um, you know, I think it'll be a, a, a good tournament there, Clayton Franklin. Cool. So very cool. Good stuff. We'll, we'll follow up on that also on Monday. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Digital Network for thegolfdirector.com. Be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, much more. Need help with your next golfing vacation? Just call Dave right here at the Golf Director, 844-464-6531. That's 844-GO-GOLF-1. All of our programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. You can click the TGD radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. You can find us on over 1 billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Catch.me, Periscope, and of course, Blueberry. On behalf of Hugh Roy III, I'm George Honeycutt. Thanks so much for joining us today on Pro Golf Talk Live, coverage of the majors right here on TGD Today. Don't go anywhere. There's a lot more golf news and information coming up next. Good job, Homer. Yeah, coming up next. Coming up next. Good job.